are overtaking the trucks on the left in the inner lane or the left right most lane because we are overtaking but they are the earliest opportunity we will get to either the middle lane and the switch to the appropriate lane which is you drive on the left now the yellow car in front is doing reasonable speed but because we are catching up with them we will maintain the right lane until we have a reasonable gap to come back to the middle or the left lane but ideally in the UK you should be driving on the left and as we drive along the road is so clear no potholes like in Nigeria where you see in <laughs> Warwick <laughs> Nigeria, now <laughs> I am going to come back to the middle lane, which is where I should be for now. But because I'm doing enough reasonable speed, and the cars on the left will be overtaking soon, I will maintain this lane. You see in front of you, you see every car, the red car, two red cars on the left. And the car in the middle. There's no car currently in the right lane, but there's no need for that. Because nobody's overtaking. Yes. And we have been driving for about five minutes, no pothole at all. Everywhere is a, a sweet. Clear. And clear. I can see a car wanting to signal to come in and all that cars are coming so I'll check my mirror, I'll signal right I'll go into the right lane just because I needed to overtake the cars in the middle lane and of course we can do this in Nigeria it is possible yes absolutely now in the right hand lane now it's only me that is in the right hand lane because I'm going Overtaking now, check my interior mirror, my right door mirror, signal left and coming to the middle lane. Now there is no car in the right hand lane. You know when you drive between Lagos and Ibadan, everybody will remain in the inner lane for no justifiable reason. I can see cars are moving out into the middle lane so I'll check my mirror, I'll switch over to the right hand lane to give everybody the distance so that everybody we can now see what, oh, don't worry about that water no, I was only wiping my screen so that we can see well the reason why all the cars in the right hand lane are there because they are traveling faster than the cars in the middle lane and the left lane. Yeah. Now, like in this country, in this country, for example, not see any truck driving in the innermost lane like we do in Nigeria. Of course not today, don't worry. That man is going back now because he knows that we are getting closer to his left the road for us and we will now continue in the innermost lane until we see no obstruction on our side yeah. then we will return back to the middle or the left lane as the case may be. You can even observe the distance between two the, uh, the cars. Yes, yeah. there's, there's what we call the two second rule distance between cars. So yeah. there's enough room to stop. Now, when the left lane is getting clear in front of us, so the chances are that we might be coming to the middle lane, which we are going to do at the moment. We've done that. The gentleman with the Honda CRV had to move to the left lane because he knew that he had to be in the left lane at that moment. In our case, because we are overtaking, cars
cars in the left lane. There's no need to slow ourselves down because we're doing the national speed limit of 17 miles an hour. Bobo. What's the national speed limit in Nigeria? The national speed limit in Nigeria is, uh, I think, 100 miles an hour. So I'm about taking the blue car. Then if the space in front of me is clear in the middle lane, I'll come back, but the car is already coming in from the left lane. So I'll give him some space somewhere here. I will return back into the middle lane. I'm looking for the opportunity to go back to the left lane when need be. But because there are so many cars on the left, I will maintain the middle lane for now. The man, somebody's coming into the middle lane, I'll check my interior mirror, the right mirror. I will switch over to the right lane because I might be slowing myself down doing the normal speed limit, which is 70 miles per hour in Nigeria, about 100 kilometers per hour. We've been driving for more than 10 minutes and it has been consistent driving without potholes. You can see the distance. You can see the distance. Cars moving smoothly. Nobody, no brake lights, no potholes. So there's safety on the road. You're not driving because you need to move the car from point A to B, but because you're using a driving procedure that will keep you the driver and all that road users safe on the road. The road is becoming congested slightly, so I'm going to ease up my gas. Congested because it bend. I can see brake lights in front, so I'll ease up. I'll check the three lanes are congested now because we're at the bend. Everybody's slowing down. The boss is trying to move into the middle lane, so most cars will move into the innermost lane just to maintain the speed. But we could see the signal of that car or the bus. Now we are dropping below the speed limit. It's going back to the outer lane because he has done the overtaking. The black car in front is going back to the middle lane because he or she has done the overtaking. It's now going to the leftmost lane. All the cars in the middle, in the right lane, might be thinking of going back to the middle or left lane, except they are going further than the next town that we might be getting to, which is Sheffield. People are picking up speed. So at the bend, nobody picked up speed. In a straight road where anybody can see clearly in front, the speed limit is maintained. People drive and they use the left lane as the normal driving lane and use the middle or the right lane for overtaking or turning right. Everybody safe, driving smoothly. We've been driving for almost 15 minutes. Not using the brake to dodge potholes as if one trailer has broken down and as we drive now we've not seen any car that is broken down either in the middle lane the right lane or the left lane or even on the curb
Ibadan and Lagos, the Moluwes and the Bosses. It's tail to tail. Now they are everybody's breaking, so we are going to reduce our speed because we are seeing that the speed limit is reducing to 50. Everybody is in obeyance of the speed limit. Now the speed limit has dropped to 50 and everybody is safe. We are going to be in this full. We are going to be within this 50 zone for some time and you will see that the traffic is going to build up and cars that are going to slowly will move into the middle lane to allow cars that are maintaining the 50 to maintain their steady speed as they drive along. You notice they're trying to uh, repair the third lane. Yeah, they are repairing the third right, lane, and based on that, there are cones, and that is why there is the reduction of speed. So people are safe. The road, the workmen have done their job by making sure that the right-hand lane that has a little bit of a problem is blocked off from usage so that it can be repaired now we now have two lanes in a motorway that is three lanes so that the motorway maintenance agency can work effectively and you can see the truck the road uh the graders and the i don't know the, the civil engineers will tell us about what they're called but i think you can see what we're talking about now the three lanes have turned into two lanes. And for the two, three lanes to turn into three lanes, they had to reduce the speed limit so that everybody drives safely as we go along. That's why we have reduced our speed to the barest minimum and to be able to stop within the distance that we can see to be safe. solid hard shoulder that is not meant for cars is now being used at this moment for cars to maintain the three lanes in question because most of the cars they will be turning off into Sheffield within the next two or three minutes. We are almost in Sheffield, right? situation where people are not forced by the authorities, by the police, or by the army to maintain laws. We are seeing a 50 speed limit zone. All the drivers are maintaining that 50 zone or 50 miles per hour maximum speed limit not because there's a policeman to whip them to obey, but because there is the essence of obeying the rules and regulations as put in the statute books of the country. And when, uh, when everyone obeys the law, everybody enjoys the... Yes, the when everybody obeys the laws, there is no Mr. A or Mr. B, the senator or the governor or the president using siren to intimidate and, har and harass other road users. Okay. Unfortunately, we might not be able to capture the 300 kilometers stretch of road that we're going to embark on. Yes. But I can assure you that there will be no politician no councillor, no House of Rep member or Senate member or the governor or the president intimidating other road users to leave a particular lane for them to drive in. Everybody, all citizens in the country we live in, 
at the moment all we reside in all citizens at least are considered to be equal without any intimidation from the political class as it is in Nigeria. Yeah. We are still within the 50 zone and everybody is still maintaining the 50 zone. And you can see the speedometer of my car which indicates that we are still driving at the 50 zone as we explained to you in this situation. You can see the 50 zone sign in front. This is all about obedience to rules and regulations. The developing countries have not developed because they have superhumans. The developed countries have developed because they have citizens that obey rules and regulations without flouting them because of their positions. Yeah. The citizens of developed countries do not intimidate the less privileged. Instead, they help. We've been recording this now for over 25 minutes. Over 15, I think. Huh? Over 15. 15 over 15 minutes. Yes. And there's no car broken down on the left. Because cars are not broken down because the system stipulates that your car must meet the yearly MOT test which is your car must be roadworthy this is not an issue to do with the government only it's an issue to do with the citizens of the country the businessmen the car companies the garages those who have been given the duty to test cars who take bribe to pass cars that are not roadworthy to be on the road and they break down in the process of driving on the roads so the clogging of our roads and the motorways is not as a result of only government failings but the failings of all of us as Nigerians yeah. for refusing to obey the very simple rules that are laid down. Yes. Your road MOT test should be done by a competent garage. That garage that will not take an extra cover from you to pass a car that is not roadworthy. A garage that takes the responsibility that their actions can be as a result of the pains of other Nigerians as the cars they have involuntarily passed because they have taken bribe will bear the problems on the road that will be the result of unnecessary accidents that we find on our roads. Getting close to 20 minutes, the road is clear. Two lanes, three lanes turn to three. You can see the road work going on. Everybody obeying the speed limit. We are obeying the speed limit because one, there's no police in front of us. And if you can look behind, take my back. If you can look behind, there's no police behind. So it is not because we are driving at this speed because there's either a police behind or in front of us, but because the citizens obey the rules of the country. We must ask ourselves, do we need a country where the citizens will be obedient to the rules of the land. Do 
we need a country where the rulers or the elected in quote leaders will be the demigods or semi-gods now the speed limit is coming up now that we can now do our our 70 miles an hour you see everybody's picking up the speed we're all going because the road works is over traffic is moving cars going to the left lane because they are going slower we'll continue at this pace like this for god knows how long and you see that there's obedience there's road safety awareness in the minds of the drivers it is not in the minds of the drivers because they got fake licenses from the road safety or from the VIOs, but they were tested by a system that has been institutionalized to accept institutions are made to function effectively no other good can come from our system so in the case of road safety there must be what we call a proper driver training and testing regime in place and the retesting and retraining of drivers in place and the testing and retraining of convoy drivers who obey the rules by doing the right thing as against satisfying their masters who are the president, the governors, the senators, House of Rep members, the House of Assembly members, the chairman, the chairman of local councils and the, uh, the councillors. Nobody is above the law. We must all be seen as being equal in the face of the law. It is only on that basis, only, and I, re I will reiterate, only on that basis that we can